creating the perfect HL7 database customized just for you. That may seem like a bold claim, but if you watch this video and allow us just 10 minutes, we will show you the best kept secret in the world of health level 7 messages, the core HL7 SQL schema engines for both Microsoft, SQL Server and MySQL. In our scenario today, our company will be receiving HL7 messages from two different hospitals. One of them will be sending ADT messages, patient demographics, while the other will be sending OAU messages containing lab reports and other documents. These two different HL7 feeds will require two completely different interfaces. The ADT data will be used to populate our electronic medical record software, and the OIU messages will be used to populate our reporting system. Shall we get started? Before we begin, we need to have a database, because the core HL7 software does not create databases, rather, it creates tables, indexes, and other objects inside of an existing database. As you can see in my SQL Server Management Studio, I have an empty database named Perfect Schema. Whilst I have chosen to create an empty database for this demonstration, your own database does not have to be empty. You can use an existing database which also contains your own tables, merging our HL7 data tables with your tables if needed. The first thing we need to do is to ask our trading partners, the two hospitals, for some example HL7 messages. We want to get as many messages as we can, and we want the messages to be as complete as possible, so that they fully represent the actual data that we will be getting. Here are my example messages. As you can see on the left, I have 10 ADT messages. These examples even include a Z segment. A Z segment, if you don't know, is a custom, user-defined segment which, in this instance, was created by Hospital 1. Z segments do not appear in any ANSI HL7 definition. On the right-hand side you can see that I have 96 ORU messages from Hospital 2. Now that we have our examples, we can move on to the next step. Next, we will create two different schema profiles in the core SQL engine. One for ADT messages and the other one for ORU messages. We will create them using the HL7 definition which contains the fewest HL7 message segments, doing it this way will ensure that, when we create our schema tables, we have the minimum number of segment data tables possible. Observe what follows closely. As you can see here in my core HL7 SQL schema engine for Microsoft SQL Server, I've created two schema profiles, one for ADT messages, and one for ORU messages. Wait while I adjust my screen. You can see that they're both in the same database, which is our perfect schema database that I showed you earlier. Let's go to the actions menu and I'm going to edit the ADT profile. Here you can see all the connection information, for our SQL Server, our database maintenance settings, etc. Here you can also see the schema prefix, ADT. The core SQL Engine software will use this schema prefix when naming all database objects that we create. But it's here in part 2 under the HL7 definition, that I've selected the truncated 2-2 definition. We created this definition and only added the bare minimum of HL7 segments, we only have 5 segments defined in here, and in several of them we have also truncated the number of HL7 fields defined. This means that when we use this vendor definition to create our schema tables, it will only create 5 segment data tables. And that is where our adventure today really begins. Now we are ready to create our schema tables. We will start by creating the tables for our ADT messages, and then we will examine the results in SQL Server Management Studio. To create our schema tables we go to the Actions menu, and we click the Create Schema Tables button. If our schema tables have already been created we will receive a message warning us of that. Since this is a permanent action, I have to check that I agree before I can continue. But what you can see here is all of the SQL scripts that will actually create all of my tables. I click OK, and the schema has been done. I can now go back into the Actions menu, and verify the schema exists and it will tell me that a core schema has been detected in the database. And that's really all there is to it. Let's go look at what happened in SQL Management Studio. If I go to Management Studio, and refresh our perfect schema database. Ah, yes. Now we can see all these tables created with names that start with the prefix ADT. 
These tables, down to the first segment table, are what is known as warehouse tables. They are created in every core HL7 schema. But after the warehouse tables, here you can see that only 5 segment data tables have been created. Only tables for the MSH segment, the NTE segment, the OBX segment, and the PID segment. It is these segment data tables which you will be most frequently accessing when you create your own HL7 interfaces. Now, obviously, even for the most basic interface, everyone will need more than just these 5 data tables. But be patient, because after we create the core HL7 schema for our OIU messages, we move on to the next step, training our schema tables, and then all of your questions will be answered. Now that I have created my OIU schema tables, I will refresh my database in Management Studio and we can have a look. At this point, as you can see, there are now two different sets of tables in our perfect schema database. These two sets of schema tables are identical, they have exactly the same fields and tables, the only difference between them is the naming convention. Our ADT schema table names all begin with ADT underscore, whilst all of the ORU schema table names all begin with ORU underscore. Now that we've got both schemas set up, we're going to start training them. This is where things will diverge, as the ADT schema is optimized for ADT messages, and the ORU schema is likewise optimized for the ORU messages. Schema training is automatic in all of the core SQL engine software. As HL7 messages are imported, any missing tables or columns are automatically added. Likewise, if a data column is too small to accommodate a piece of data it will automatically be resized, to accommodate the data. This will prevent any type of data truncation from occurring. You can also manually train your schema tables without actually importing any messages, and this is what we will be doing next. Training your core SQL schema tables to produce the perfect HL7 database is shockingly easy to do. All that I have to do is open the Actions menu, and then click the Train the Schema Tables button. This will open the database training window. In here, all that I have to do is select either a single file containing messages, or, I can select a folder containing HL7 message data files and it will train using all of the files found in that folder. This means that you can train your schema tables with tens of thousands of HL7 messages if you want to. Having selected my HL7 data file, I just click the Start Your Training Operation button and watch the progress. Watch closely because since I only have 10 messages selected it will run very quickly. Now, wait while I also train our ORU schema tables using the 96 example messages we got from Hospital 2, and then we can review what happened in our SQL Management Studio. When we refresh our tables in the perfect schema database, we can see some dramatic changes have been made to both the ADT and ORU schemas. Note all of the new tables in the ADT schema. The training operation even created a table for the custom Z segment we had in our example messages. Let us compare the changes made in the ADT schema with the changes which were made to the ORU schema. As you will recall, when we started the training operation, these schemas were identical. Now, the ORU schema contains only segment data tables which relate to the HL7 ORU examples we got from Hospital 2, while the ADT schema only contains the relevant tables for the ADT examples we got from Hospital 1. Now that I can see exactly what my different schemas will look like, what tables they contain, and what data columns exist in those tables, I can design my own internal processes needed to process messages as they are imported into each schema, whether that be stored procedures, or using whatever development environment I choose. This concludes our demonstration of how to create your perfect HL7 database. Feel free to try this out yourself, you can download the core HL7 SQL Engine software from our website and activate a free demo license. Remember that while this demonstration used Microsoft SQL Server, you can also download the SQL Engine for MySQL as well. If you have enjoyed this content, please let us know by liking this video, and subscribe to our channel to get notified when we release new content.